customize the five pillars of branding for a strong brand. Okay, so clicking works. Building a strong brand means amplifying your differentiation factor. And in this training, my goal is to point out what those pillars are, teach you why you need to take a good hard look at them and show you how to customize them for your business. And if you take what you learned today and actually implement it, I know we're all learning so many things, but it's hard to actually do the things you learn. I believe that you'll ultimately be able to make quicker business decisions narrow down advertising mediums to most to the most effective for your audience, clarify your messaging to your most ideal customer, and empower your employees to become excited messengers. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank you all for joining me today. I'm fully aware of how much time we're all spending behind screens and never ending zoom meetings, and how boring it is to only style the front of your hair, which I have done today. My goal last spring was to do as many in-person presentations as I could, but unfortunately, this is still as good as it gets. So I really appreciate you guys joining me today. I created this training with fellow solopreneurs and personal brands in mind, because I know how hard it is to find your footing with marketing strategies and tactics when you're the only one making decisions in your business. However, if you're here and you're not a solopreneur, or if you're a marketing director or PR manager of a company or a nonprofit, I'm positive there will be some takeaways that you can use to help hone in your branding and marketing strategy. Um, so I encourage you to stay with me today and just keep in mind that this was written for the owner or the CEO um, and with a mission in mind. So who am I and why am I doing this presentation? If you don't already know me, I'm Maria Treno, owner of Inspired Studio, a brand design and marketing agency here in Northeast PA. I'm an entrepreneur, a brand designer and strategist, and a life coach for entrepreneurs. And I'm doing this presentation because frankly, I miss people. I'm an extra extrovert who spends 90% of my time in my home office. And as lovely as it is, it's also sort of lonely. And so is being a solopreneur. So in an effort to soothe myself, I'm doing this so that I can meet like-minded people such as yourselves. So thank you again for spending time with me today. At the end of this webinar, I want you to walk away understanding the importance of giving your brands, your business's branding a good hard look. I want you to walk away feeling confident that you actually have the ability to craft, tweak, or rebuild your own brand. I want you to feel motivated to do the work that it's going to take to make that happen. And I want you to feel a lot less pressure to learn or invest a lot of money in the next new marketing tactic that's advertising to you on Facebook. I started Inspired Studio nine years ago, a boutique brand design and marketing agency where we collaborate with entrepreneurs, marketing directors, and CEOs to create strong brands through meaningful design and strategic marketing. We keep a short client list, but dive really deep into understanding our clients and providing top-notch services that help them achieve their goals with brand design and management always at the core. We've spent tens of thousands of hours listening to, strategizing with, and designing for our clients, bringing their dreams of beautiful brands to life. And what a gift it has been to be invited into their world and into their business, exposed to their greatest hopes and fears in order to craft a visual brand that expresses their true self to their most ideal audience. By working together, the outcome inevitably becomes greater than the sum of the individual parts. Through the years, we've seen patterns take shape and have developed a process that gets right to the root of branding challenges and this process works with startups and established businesses alike. The process works. It works so well that we turned it into a self-study digital course called the Understand Your Brand. And in an effort to keep this webinar short and sweet, I could talk about this for days. I'm going to give you an overview of each of the modules and cover the five pillars of building a strong brand. And at the end of this webinar, you'll be able to purchase and download the full 32 page PDF workbook 
with more than 50 questions to help you hone in on your unique brand, including four formulas to help you write your unique selling proposition. And with it, I'll send you a free editable brand guide template to keep all of your findings in. And these um, will also come with full access to the digital course if you'd like. So I'll, I'd like you to actually take notes today or you could put them in the chat on your questions and we're gonna save them all for the end because I'm afraid if we get bogged down on one section, we won't be able to get to all five pillars. So what are the benefits of understanding your brand before marketing? Um, oh, you know what? I skipped ahead. Sorry, everybody. So before we start on the pillars, let's take a quick look at why you're here. You're ready to market your business or you've been marketing your business and it hasn't gotten you the results you're looking for. But before you can do that, you must understand your brand. And so here are the benefits of understanding your brand before you market. I believe your business is a reflection of you so that by amplifying what makes you unique, you quickly start to knock out your competition. You'll confidently be able to share your work with others. You won't feel icky about the marketing or sales process anymore. Marketing and sales is not dirty. It doesn't have to feel uncomfortable and you'll see why. And you'll save money because you won't be blowing through your marketing budget without seeing a return. So before we can understand your brand, you need to understand what a brand actually is. And the big thing to remember is that brands are about feelings and feelings are complicated. Branding can be difficult to define, but here are a few definitions to lay the foundation. David Ogilvy says, a brand is the intangible sum of a product's attributes. To Marty Numair, a brand is not a logo, a brand is not an identity, a brand is not a product. A brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service, or organization. Seth Godin believes a brand is the set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships that taken together account for a customer's decision to choose one product or service over another. And to me, an inspired brand is one that is intentionally infused with purpose, heart, and passion that attracts and connects with those it's meant to impact. Your business already has a brand, whether you've intentionally created it or not. And I'm here to teach you how to finally take ownership and control of it and stop letting others tell your story for you. I believe you are the perfect person to bring your brand to life. Only you have the capability to write your own business's brand story. Before you can focus your attention on outward marketing and sales tactics, I'm encouraging you to look inward and make sure that what you're saying is meaningful, truthful, and impactful. Let's take a look at this diagram. Here on the far right is your outward marketing efforts. Taking one step back, we can see all the different brand elements that go into that. And many people think this is the place to start, but look at everything else they're missing. I'm going to walk you through my step-by-step -step process of working from the inside out to carefully craft your unique selling proposition, which is the cornerstone of your marketing. And I invite you to break away from your old thinking and embrace a new way of looking at your business. Allow yourself to take the time and dive deeply and identify and define the brand at the core, your business's core. So pillar one, we're gonna uncover your why. So here's another look at the big picture diagram. And we're gonna start from the beginning, uncovering your why. I believe that small businesses are a reflection of their owner. If there's only one you, then obviously there's no one else exactly like you. So if your business is a true reflection of you, then there's no other business exactly like yours. Therefore, if there is no other business exactly like yours, then you kind of have no competition. It really is that simple. The more you know yourself, the more you know your business. And the more you know your business, the better you can differentiate it. And the better you differentiate your business, the less competition you have. You're going to intentionally create a brand that is so much a reflection of you that no other company can even compare. 
We've been trained to design very unique logos based on our client's differentiation factor, but sometimes our clients don't even know what that is, or they think they do, but trust me, more often than not, they haven't thought deeply enough. Many times they're thinking about their business plan, right? The things like operations, market analysis, competitive analysis, sales and marketing, they're all really important, but I believe that they're skipping over the most important part of what's going to keep their business in business. And that's you, not just you, but your why. This is a very important first step because it impacts every facet of your business. It's the thing that I'm sure you face when you've experienced tough times in your business. The reason you started your business in the first place and the reason you're here pushing yourself to be better and to do better. I challenge you to get to know yourself. Don't be afraid to really go there and get to know who you are at the core and why you started your business in the first place. I know we all started our businesses to make money but I am telling you right now that is not unique. I'm talking about the one thing that gets you out of bed in the morning, you, your motivation to make a change in the world around you. I want you to think deeply about the following statement in question. Answer to the best of your ability. This will be an evolving question and I want you to keep asking yourself why to every statement until you get so clear that there isn't a question left. I am a what and why. And by the way, you guys, you're probably not gonna have all the answers today. This is something that you're gonna to have to go back. So I encourage you to take notes. And this is something that you'll probably, you can think about for weeks, probably until you, until you really get it honed in. So here are a few points to ponder. When was the first time you thought about becoming a what happened in your life to inspire you to think that way? If you didn't need to earn money in your business, would you still be happy to do what you're doing every single day? And then I want you to just keep asking yourself why. You'll know you've got your answer when you can't go further back in history and when the answer feels so unique that no other person could possibly have the same experiences and feel the same about them. All right, that was pillar one. Pillar two, going back to this diagram, once you uncover your why, you're going to nail your niche. What is a niche anyway? It's defined as a small but profitable segment of a market suitable for focused attention by a marketer. Market niches do not exist by themselves. They're created by identifying needs or wants that are not being addressed by everyone else and by offering products and services that satisfy those needs. So once you have a great grasp on your why, that might determine your niche. Excuse me. <clears throat> sometimes your why defines your niche first, but sometimes your why defines your ideal audience first. For example, if you're a craftsman with a set of skills and talents, your why determines your niche. Your craftsman with a honed skill offering products and services that are best suited to your expertise. But if you're a nurse who's passionate about helping new moms, for example, your why first defines a very clear audience. Now we're going to get to defining your ideal audience next, but for now we're going to focus on where your business stands in the marketplace. Knowing your niche means knowing how you stand against your competition, knowing what you can do better, faster, and differently in order to shine. This concept seems straightforward and really simple, but I promise you it is not to be missed. And Inspired, we always need to know where our clients stand in the marketplace. So after we uncover their deep why, their motivations and frustrations, we ask a lot of questions about what they sell so that we can tell their story through brand elements that work for their unique marketing needs. If we only knew their why, we'd be leaving some big differentiators left on the table. A friendly reminder, surface level questions yield surface level answers. So take some time to really think about what makes you different and don't be afraid to carve your own niche in your own corner of the market in more ways than one. 
Another thing to remember is that these questions and answers will not only help you eventually write your unique selling proposition, they can also aid in helping you tweak areas of your business if you allow them to. We live in a time when so many things are possible. I really believe if you can dream it, chances are there's a way to make it happen. So here are some questions to consider when carving your niche. What products and services do you offer? Which ones make the most profit? What problems can you solve and for whom? Who is your competition? I want you to go ahead and evaluate their weaknesses. What can you do better, faster, and differently in order to shine? <clears throat> this section, this niche section, is not a one-hit wonder. You may come back to this a few times until you really nestle into the place that feels the most like home for you, for you and your ideal audience. But to get started, I want you to go ahead and start having fun with these questions and think really big. Think big. I mean, don't be afraid to stretch beyond your comfort zone and really push the envelope and really, um, you know, go for it, carve out that niche. And then once you think big, just keep fine tuning. Okay. So now we're going to talk about your ideal audience. I believe this section is probably the most important and the most labor intensive. And I believe it's the most financially rewarding. So if all you do at the end of this webinar is focus on this section, I'm sure you're guaranteed to benefit from it. So we've uncovered the why and the what of your business, and now it's time for the who. There are two different parts to this lesson. Step one is identifying your ideal audiences, and step two is validating your ideal audiences. So let's start with identifying. I'm sure you've heard of Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your profits come from 20% of the sales. But what if you could replace that not so valuable 80% with the same kind of customer as the top 20%? Imagine how that could change your business. Your business is not cranking out any old thing. You are trying to build an empire that changes lives. You've poured your life into your business products and services. So let's not waste your marketing dollars trying to attract the wrong people. I encourage you to get to know your ideal audience as well as you know your best friend. Like really think about who's your best friend and how well you know them. You know their darkest fears and you know what lights them up. That's how I want you to know your ideal audience. So after that, you'll easily be able to tweak every touch point of your marketing to be succinct and effective. The messages, visuals, brand aesthetic, and positioning you decide upon will attract the right type of customers who will hear, see, and understand the value you're giving them. If you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one. The days of marketing to the masses are, they're really long gone. You can't just say, here I am, and here's what I do to anyone and everyone, hoping that somehow, some way, You'll reach someone who actually cares enough to turn their head or who even wants to pull out their wallet. Being too general with your messaging isn't reaching more people like you might think. It's actually doing very little, if anything, for your business. In fact, it could potentially be driving your ideal audience straight into the hands of someone who shouldn't even be considered your competition just because their messaging is being understood by your audience. That's all that's so important. Having a very clear, intimate understanding of who you're speaking to and narrowing it down as far as you can is the way to make a solid connection. You want people to hear your message and think to themselves, how do, how do they know what I'm thinking? How are they inside my head right now? I'm sure you've seen ads like that on Facebook when, they're, when you're like, how do they know what I'm shopping for? Remember, you're looking for that top 20% and I believe they're out there looking for you too. So the better you can speak their language, the closer they're gonna listen. And the more they align with who you are, who your business is and your why, the more they will be willing to become your buyer. 
Most businesses have more than one ideal audience, okay? Your business may cater to both businesses and consumers. You may have very different groups of people whom you serve. And you can categorize this whichever way is the most natural for your particular business. So you can group them by pain points, buying decisions, age groups, gender. There's no one way to do this. But I want to remind you that you know your business better than anyone. And you know your audiences better than anyone. So have faith that your instincts are onto something. To identify your audiences, you can ask yourself all the demographic questions that are on the left here and the psychographic questions that are on the right. You might just want to take a screenshot. Um, demographic questions are, you know, male, female, age range, how much money they make, education, um, decision makers, influencers, and users. So you're going to want to think about that family and who in that family is the decision maker. Um, let's say, let's say you're a movie theater. Um, the decision makers are the parents right? The influencers might be the kids, right? So, you know, mom and dad, I want to see that, that movie this weekend. And then the users are everybody. And then you'll want to ask the psychographic graphic questions, which is like the really, um, the deep mindset inside the minds of your potential audience. So, you know, what's a typical day in the life? Um, who or what really inspires them? Are they religious or spiritual? Are they happy? So like think about their pain points there. Um, and then what do they prioritize when they're making these decisions based on your individual business? Are they prioritizing price, quality, ease, time savings? You know, what is it for your business? And then step two is you're gonna validate. So now that you've identified your audiences, it's time for step two. We have to validate your findings. And it may seem redundant, but I encourage you really don't skip this part. I've been guilty of it myself. Don't skip this part. You need to make sure that what you think is true about your ideal audience actually is. Plus the additional knowledge you will gain will never hurt your business. It's only going to help. It doesn't have to be complicated. There's a few ways you can easily validate. You can reach out to your top customers and just ask them questions. And I'm not talking about a cold postcard survey, okay? We want to make a real connection with people. So I'm talking about like a warm reach out. You can call them, meet them up for coffee, um, or just have a chat. If you have a real retail space and you see them come in, just pull them aside and just start asking them questions. And then you can start to um, extend your reach a little bit more. So you can try finding people who'd be willing to give you a few minutes of their time through social channels. You can post in Facebook groups where you know your audience is hanging out. Um, and then Google Forms makes it really easy to create a survey. Um, but I really encourage you, don't be shy because your business is on the line. And I, I believe in people and I think, I think people really just want to support other people. So if you just said, hey, you know, I'm working on growing my business. I really love your opinion. What do you think about this? And then, you know, it's only going to start building a strong connection. And then what you'll be able to do is, is let's say they say, you know, I just don't have enough time in my day and you offer a solution for that. Then you can use what they say to you, their pain points in your marketing messaging. So you could say something like, um, you know, I know you feel like you never have enough time, but you know, with X, Y, and Z, um, I can help you save up to three hours a day or something as an example. Okay, so that was ideal audiences. And now we're going to work on engaging emotions. So I said the last section was important, but it, when it comes to branding, uh, this section is really important too. Building a brand has everything to do with feelings and emotions. So I'm going to go on a little tangent on this one, but I promise how it all ties in. So after I became a mom and I really struggled with a mild case of postpartum depression, I became obsessed, obsessed with learning how the brain works and how amazingly beautiful it is and how immensely powerful it is. 
But the one simple thing that I learned that like literally changed everything for me, like almost overnight was that a thought precedes an emotion. So it's actually neuroscience. Your brain always thinks a thought before you feel an emotion. Emotions can happen so quickly that you don't even realize that you definitely had a thought, even a tiny fleeting thought before you felt the emotions. Emotions drive behaviors and behaviors impact results. So in this section, we're gonna talk about two ways emotions can influence your brand. And the first way is your business's personality. Is your business fun and flirty or serious and data-driven? I want you to think about your business as a person and think about how that person would show up in the world. As a designer, I can tell you that this is going to influence the fonts you choose, the colors, photography style, everything that's gonna visually represent your brand, right? Typography has personalities, colors elicit different emotions. So knowing this personality piece is really, really important. And the, whoops, I don't know how to, I don't know how to click back guys. So the second part of this section identifies how you want your ideal audience to feel when they interact with your brand. Okay, so we talked about personality and now we wanna talk about how people feel when they interact with your brand. Do you want them to feel entertained and empowered or safe and secure? Obviously it doesn't have to be like one or the other, but by knowing how you want people to feel, you'll be able to leverage your messaging and marketing in a way that will help your branding stay strong and consistent. And this is why I believe you have immense power as a business owner. And now is the time to use them. You have special gifts and talents for a reason. And because you've invested in yourself and invested in your business, I know that you also understand the strength of your power. And this is where we're gonna put it to work. So by now you're sure on your why, you've carved out your niche and your besties with your ideal audience, right? Or audiences. And it's time to tap into their feelings because carefully crafted brands are intentional about how they make their customers feel. So your homework for this section is to write down five to 10 personality traits of your business, okay? So for example, are you educational, a leader, diverse, okay? And then I want you to write down five to 10 words that describe how you want people to feel when they encounter your brand, okay? Whether it's, you know, through word of mouth or they see a billboard or they get an email from you, how do, they, how do you want them to feel? So you might want them to feel intelligent, fascinated, challenged. Um, I, I chose these examples as if they were like one company, like maybe like a, like a higher ed or something. This might be how they'd wanna be positioned. So all of these answers are gonna help you get closer to building your messaging, which is the cornerstone of marketing. So we're gonna take another look at the diagram here. So working from the inside out, we've talked about your why, niche, audience, and emotions. And it's finally time to master your messaging. This is where we take all of your hard work and put it to work for your business. And all the brain dumping that you, I hope, I hope we'll do after this webinar on all these sections are going to pay off and this is where it all comes together. So pillar five is when we master your messaging. You'll use your internal voice and your brand's brand voice answers from the previous pillar to explain what, why, and how your product or service fulfills your ideal audience's wants and needs. So the goal is to differentiate your business from the competition and you'll do this by describing the benefits and solutions. Your brand's message is a combination of who you are, who you serve, what value you offer them, and how you can guarantee that value through meaningful promise. Consistently weaving this overarching message throughout your marketing conversations increases your ability to create trust and inspire your ideal audience to resonate with you. I told you that I believe no two businesses are alike and that the more you can express your business as a reflection of you, the less competition you'll have. Unfortunately, that's not always the case, right? 
as you look around, you're looking at other businesses and maybe they're copying other businesses. But the good news is that doesn't have to be you. It's time to use all the answers from all the work and craft your unique selling proposition, your USP. When crafting your USP, you'll wanna think about all the benefits your business provides and how they alleviate your ideal audience's pain points because customers don't wanna buy products, they want to solve problems. All of your efforts are going to add up to a powerful, timeless, meaningful, converting message that will tell your ideal audience exactly why they should choose your business over someone else's. Your USP will make marketing decisions easy for you. There won't be a question that your findings will not be able to answer. It will help you make business decisions easier. You'll know exactly what you need to offer to the people who are buying from you. When you need more cash flow, you'll already have trained your brain to start thinking in a way that will create more benefits for your top 20% of buyers. Okay, do you see how these simple concepts can seep into like the grander perspective of your business? It's also going to save you marketing dollars because you will know where you're not to advertise, right? Because you don't wanna to advertise to the people who aren't your ideal audience. You know your client, clientele better than anyone. So you don't have to go blasting your message to people who don't need to hear it. Your final USP will become the cornerstone of your overall marketing strategy. It'll be highlighted in your ad copy. There might be a short version on your business card it will be on job postings and employee handouts. Um, and it may even help with your mission statement. As a designer myself, I know that you can leverage your messaging to ensure any creative or designer you hire can craft a visual identity that honors your business in a way that gets you excited to promote it. Trust me, I've done this hundreds of times. I don't have to warn you because I, I'm sorry, I do have to warn you. This is, this is something really important. I've seen this happen a lot. Be careful that you don't get too excited boasting about your products and services more than explaining the benefits. And I'm gonna repeat that. Do not boast about your products and services more than you explain the benefits of your products and services because that's what everyone else does. And you are not everyone else. By emphasizing the benefits of your products and services, you're placing greater value on the emotional payoff and appealing to your customer's desire to solve their problems. So here is one example of a formula that you can use to craft your USP. You can go ahead and create a screenshot of that. Inside Understand Your Brand Digital Course, you'll have lifetime access to three more formulas as well as the full length tutorials and a 32 page PDF to guide you through the entire process in your own timeline. So once you're in complete control of your brand, your why, niche, audience, personality, emotions, and messaging, you can take the pressure off yourself when it comes to marketing, right? Because in order to market well and cost effectively, all you have to do is look at your ideal audiences. Where are they hanging out? Where are they spending your time? What pain points do you solve? And at what point do they make buying decisions on that pain point? You're gonna to wanna to meet them where they are, speak their language, and use all the information you've gathered and really just be a good human. People simply want to feel seen, understood, and cared for. They wanna make a connection if you can do that, no matter which tactic you use to market your business, you're gonna build a strong and brand loyal customer base. The marketing tactics you choose will be based on things like budget for actual advertising, as well as the vendors that you need to hire to help you. What you have the ability and knowledge to do in-house right? So you don't want to go investing in some crazy marketing tactic that you can't pull off internally. It'll just make you crazy and cost a ton of money that you don't need to spend. Look at what your competition is doing, but also something that I think is so important for entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, people like me who have a small business and you're doing a lot yourself. 
you have to do what feels good to you. I know it's counterintuitive, but if it doesn't feel good to you, you're going to be, you're not going to, you're not going to have that attractive vibe that you're really going to want. So those plans for marketing can tweak and change over time and you can course correct as you go. You can add more to your marketing budget as you start to make more money, but your brand is something actually it's everything that seeps into every nuance of your business. So I know how lonely it is to be a solopreneur and how hard it can be to make decisions for your business when you don't have a trusted source to bounce ideas off of. I also know because I work with one myself, how much farther you can go in your business and faster when you work with a coach or consultant who can give you a new perspective. And I'd love to explore whether I can be that person for you. I want to be a good marketer myself if I didn't tell you a few ways that we can work together. So here I am walking the walk. The videos inside our digital course, Understand Your Brand, have been professionally recorded and they're still being cut as we speak. So I'll be uploading those videos very soon inside our course platform. So if you purchase the course today using the code course and call, I will give you a free 60 minute consultation to give you individualized support whenever you need it. So before you get started or during the process or even after, and I, this code expires Wednesday. So, um, Whenever you purchase the course, I will reach out to you directly and we'll schedule your call. So just visit mariatraino.com and you can head to the bottom of the page for more information. And you'll also see that you can order just the PDF worksheets if you want to. Um, I know that the chamber is going to be putting out a recording so you can go through this recording again with your worksheet and fill it out um, on your own. Then you can schedule an intensive or even a three month package if you'd like. And with that, everybody, I'm done and we're ready for questions. Don't be shy. This is this is your time to ask Maria. 19 years of experience right here. I see a lot of stuff in the chat. Yeah, they were putting their emails and their businesses there. I would love to know really, Maria, what inspired you to, to create your own business too? Um, that's a good question. So I was raised in the restaurant business. My dad and my mom and dad are actually third generation business owners. And I grew up around that. Um, I grew up every day just watching my parents um, just, just embody entrepreneurship, right? So then I decided to study creative design, uh, communication design, and I went to school to be a designer. And I always dreamed that I would like go to New York and work at a big ad agency. And um, after college, I landed in Scranton and there, you know, I realized I was kind of stuck with opportunities here. And I, I took as many as I could, but as a creative, I felt really boxed in. Um, you can't put a creative, person in a box. So the same fonts, same color, same subject matter all the time. We go crazy. So what happened was I started to lose it and I was really unfulfilled and I was really unhappy. And I had a nice book of freelance clients. So I, I saved my money and I said, I'm going to follow my passions. I'm going to follow that little glimmer of hope and that little glimpse of light that's in my life. And I was 28 years old. And I said, what do I have to lose? So I knew that I was obsessed with logo design at the time. And I knew that I didn't want to be a designer that did like invitations or like, you know, stuff like that. I really wanted to focus on businesses because coming from a business myself, I was just so passionate about watching entrepreneurs and seeing them do what really lights them up. So I did the same thing and I focused on um, companies and corporations. And then nine years later, uh, we're doing so much more than just design, like so much more. So it's exciting. 
That's fantastic. Danielle has her hand up. I think she has a question. Hi, Maria. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Um, this way exceeded my expectations. So I'm, I'm so excited to have heard what you said today. Uh, my question for you on branding is, you know, I work at Chomihana Army Depot. We're part of the Army. They have a very specific set of branding they want us to use, but it's really not analogous with our mission, right? You know, we're not the Army. We don't have a bunch of military personnel on post. So what kind of, what kind of ideas do you have for someone that kind of has to fall under this staunch, but not really specific marketing? How can we really make our mark while still falling under that umbrella? So, I mean, obviously, I would say that the, you know, the U.S. military, everyone's kind of familiar with that already. So you don't have to adhere to that super strictly. I would really go to your ideal audiences. So like, who would you, who would you be trying to market to at the Army Depot? Like trying to get employees or, or. Uh, so certainly employees, because people, first of all, don't know what we do. You know, we're not, we're not target. People can't come see our facilities willy nilly. They can't really engage with what it is that we do. Um, but also the community, just letting them know what it is that we do and how they can support us. Um, and you know, that's really just been a challenge for us. I can't just invite you up for a tour and be like, Hey, do you want to see all this super secret squirrel stuff we do? <laughs> so for us, it's really just been, how do we get our arms around letting people know what we do because most people think we just warehouse things. Yeah. I mean, so if you're looking at the community and you just want to share some, you know, that's basically brand awareness. So think about the community, think about how they like to receive information. You know, is there a community wide newsletter? Is there a newspaper? Is there a direct mail? Can you do every door direct mail? So think about that. Like how do they receive information and then think about what's going to mean something to them? You know, like if I'm, if I'm a neighbor or if, well, right now I, I think, yeah, my neighbor down the street works with Toby Hanna. So like, think about how these people, think about what message they need to hear in order to take action. Like if you're asking them to, like, what would be an example of an ask for them? Um, well, uh, right now, I think a big thing for us is just trying to recruit. Uh, I know everyone's having trouble recruiting and that's obviously such a, such a generic thing, but really just trying to get the word out about our jobs. Because again, we being a military organization, we don't advertise in the newspaper. So for us, it would be like, you need to go to this Mm -hmm. generic website and you need to see the opportunities we have. And, you know, especially this time of year with students graduating, we have tons of high tech jobs software stuff like that but people don't know that so so the best thing you could do I could tell you right now the answer um tell stories of the people who are doing the job and what lights them up about it that's it it's just a matter of of aligning the perspective person with like fulfillment whatever fulfillment means to them so then go to your employees and say what lights you up about this high-tech job what is it about this that is like brings you to work every day figure out what their why is and then you're going to want to communicate that to your your potential recruits so it's understanding so are the recruits like new college kids that never had a job before so maybe money will be enticing to them maybe knowledge and more education or you know a a good resume builder is important to them and then speak to them about that if it's somebody who's more seasoned you know, maybe it's a, you know, the 401k and the benefits package, or maybe it's um, a a greater sense of fulfillment, like, um, you know, work-life balance might be really important to like a seasoned employee. So I would say go to your ideal audience, um, think about what, what would really feel like fulfillment to them, and then pull those stories from your individuals inside your company, because that's the why, and then just to like tell them in a way that they're going to hear it. Right. So maybe the college kids will see a social media ad, but there's more seasoned people might be looking on LinkedIn. Um, So that would be my suggestion there. That's tremendously helpful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. We did have one question in the chat box. Um, Do you have any tips for staying positive in these crazy times? My clients have been hit hard by COVID, causing them to lose money, which flows down to me. 
And it's hard to stay positive every day. I want to catch you in joy in what you do. Your joy. Um, I've seen the same thing. Um, our clients, many of them struggled. We lost some clients with COVID. We also doubled up on some clients. Like some clients doubled down. Um, so in this like changing climate, there's good and bad in everything. Um, for me personally, staying positive when things are really hard, I, I'll tell you right now, I watch, I watch my internal thoughts. Um, just like I said, your thoughts create emotions. If you can just become aware of your thoughts and what you're thinking, like if you're thinking every day, oh my God, all my clients are miserable. Oh my God, this is so hard to keep going through my day because everybody's so grumpy all the time that's going to make you feel resentment toward your business. And then keep repeating that every day, every week, every month, the results that come from that tiny little thought are going to, they're going to trickle into every, literally every nuance of your life, right? It's going to trickle into your health. It's going to trickle into your relationships. It's going to trickle into how much you're sleeping or, you know, what you're eating, right? So become aware of your thoughts. And also know that there's multiple sides to every story, right? So we have this gut reaction to go to see, you know, something negative, right? But then if you stop and become aware of your perspective in this given moment, um, there's another side to it. Always, always. I know it sounds so cliche, but there's always another side. So like, let's say some some businesses are, they're losing money, right? Well, this is a great opportunity to find new opportunities to make money. You know, maybe they've lost this kind of clientele, but maybe there's somebody in their office that has some hidden skill and talent that they've been suppressing all this time. And you can highlight that and bring them to the forefront and attract new people and new ways to make money. Um, there's not a lack of money out there. There's not a lack of opportunities. Um, I just think you have to really pay attention to your mindset and be in control of that, control it. And, and always look for that other side because there's something called, um, oh God, I can't even think of it right now. Your reticular activating system inside your brain. And that's like when you get a Honda and then you start seeing all the Hondas. Your, your, it's an actual real brain science thing. Um, so when you start focusing on all the positive things that make you then feel good, you're going to see more of that and you're going to start to see more opportunities out there. So that's my long winded and kind of cliche answer, but it totally works. <laughs> Great. Thank you for sharing too. That's, I think it's helpful to everybody here. I think we're all going, we're all in the same boat at this point. Yeah. Just trying to get through. So it's hard. Any last minute questions? We have a few more minutes. Hi, this is Jenny Heatro. Hey. I, I don't have a specific question. Hi, Maria, but I just wanted to tell people on the call that um, I bought your branding course and here I am again, like can't get enough of what you teach and preach. Um, but one of the things that I think is important for everybody to think about is you're either like working in your business or on your business. And sometimes people think that branding is like your social media or a logo, but like if you can really define it through this process, it makes literally every single business decision better. And I own a marketing consulting firm and I bought her course and Maria business coaches me and like everybody can use that perspective. And, you know, she'll say to you things like the answers are inside, you know them already. And I'm like, no, I don't. But when you go through these processes and really intentionally think about your brand and what makes you different, I mean, it's, it's a process, right, Maria? So I would say like to anybody who's thinking about doing it, even if you're in the marketing field, there's no shame in the game of trying to like reach out to other people and get different perspectives, even if it is your core is marketing and, and branding, because it's very important to define it and understand it and literally get it on paper. Sometimes we think we know, mm -hmm. but we don't know how to get it out. So I think it's just important for people to realize you don't have to have all the answers because you're busy in the day to day. And taking the time to like go through a process and define your brand. It's not a logo. It's not a font. It's not a color palette or a standards guide. It's so much more. So 
Thanks, anyway, here I am on every Maria webinar that I can be on. So thank you for sharing your knowledge every time. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you for sharing. That's wonderful. I know I've learned things. Um, you know, I've been doing marketing myself, and I think that it's fantastic to get everybody together like this and just, you know, talk things through and help each other out. I think that's fantastic. Anyone else? We're almost at our time. I'm going to take that as a no. Um, Maria, thank you so much on behalf of the, the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm Victoria Rogers, by the way. I didn't get a chance to say hi, but Maria has been fantastic. And uh, we just really, you know, want to stick together through everything. And I appreciate your time today, Maria, and your beautiful presentation. Even the, the slides are beautiful. Um, so you do a great job. And I hope everyone has a great Monday. Again, this is recorded, so you're welcome to um, watch it again on our website, which should be up in a couple, in a few days, along with the slides. And feel free to reach out to Maria or anybody else on this call. I think uh, everybody shared uh, most of their information in the chat box below. So thank you all so much. And Maria, thank you so much again. And Thanks for um, having me. Yeah, anytime. Everyone have a great Monday and a great week and stay safe.